Hey, 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 it's Chrissy Lulu. So today is probably one of my biggest art supply Sunday videos I'll be doing. And this is going to be on my alcohol markers. If you guys want, I can have an art supply Sunday video focused on each of the brands I do have and each brand that I may get in the future. I don't plan on expanding just yet, but um, I've expanded quite a bit since I first started this channel. If you remember, um, I do have a video up. I'll put it in the cards for you. Um, you can go check that out and see. Um, I do have a couple videos of me buying a bunch more of these, um, but see what it was like before I expanded. <laughs> So, alcohol markers, as you can see, come in many different shapes and forms. Typically, with your alcohol markers, you have a chisel tip. It doesn't matter what brand you're getting, you're normally getting a chisel tip on one end. And then the other end is either, like on the Spectrum Noirs I have, a bullet nib, or as I have on a couple of my brush markers, you can get a brush nib. These guys are more flexible. You got more give to them. Um, and a lot of people actually prefer brush tips over the bullet tips just because they are easier to blend, which is the main draw to having alcohol markers. Um, I can go and do a video on just plain old markers, like oil or water-based markers. But the alcohol-based markers blend very nicely, while water-based markers are unable to. So as you can see, there's many different brands that make alcohol markers, and they're all a little bit different. They all have their little quirks and the kind of colors they sell. So you can see Spectrum Roar tends to be very um, focused on bright and vibrant colors with only a couple of not so bright and vibrant um wow um our Windsor and Newton markers which are the pro markers and the brush markers as you can see pro markers have just a bullet tip brush markers have as the name states a brush tip so they have kind of some vivid but they do have a lot of more darker tones. And like Copics, which are right here, they actually follow a nice numbering system. So you're not going to get lucky with all your numbers, not every number, you're not going to get lucky with all your markers. They're not all going to have a complicated numbering system like Copics and Windsor Newt markers have. So uh, from what I can tell from Spectrum Noir, these numbers don't really have any meaning except for telling you what color it is so I'm pretty sure this is like pink lavender or something I'm not sure um, CR I'm pretty sure is crimson red um, PP I'm pretty sure is pale purple LV is light lavender or er, light violet. DR is deep red or dark red. At least I've been able to draw that from the letters that they've given you. That's what my speculation is. But with the nice thing with Copics, oh well, Copics have somewhat of an easier numbering system since it is only a two-way numbering system. So they tell you kind of where, like which markers would blend nicely together. So in theory, you could say that E11 and E13 are going to blend very nicely because they're close to each other in the number scale. While Y635 and Y657 will probably also blend very nicely because they're right next to each other. No, oh, maybe they wouldn't. They are a little ways off, but that's kind of the theory. But um, 
these guys, they have a pretty complicated numbering system. And from what I've been able to tell, these numbers all mean something. Um, I'm pretty sure they mean saturation. Like, like, they, they go from 0 to 9, of course. And that is what all these numbers are based on, pretty much. And you can kind of see by looking through these, um, you start off with really lights and you get to the dark. So I'm pretty sure these nines here, I'm not sure. Something is dark or something. Yeah? Even though I don't know the systeming down pat, I might just post something right here. Let you know what I'm trying to say. I just can't think of it off the top of my head. But they have a very complicated numbering system, which is helpful, but it's not nice in remembering numbers. So you're not going to remember. Well, my favorite color is Y616. You're probably going to remember the number or the names like khaki better than these numbers. Well, I often do remember Copic colors better than these guys, or the numbers. And these guys do have a very similar numbering system. So anything within the ones blend very nicely together. Anything within threes would blend nicely together. And you go from light to dark in these. So this is a simpler numbering system than very complicated pro markers. Um, so yeah, you've got a lot of variety. Um, the best way you can actually see it is in my skin tone set right here. Which I actually love to use these, they all work very nicely. And then you have random numbering without any numbers, except for blue-gray one. <laughs> so, we're gonna bring these guys in, as we saw with brush markers and Copics. They all, oh, and the Spectrum Mars. Um, they all have a number for what color category they fall under, as an E for Earth. So that's any earthy tones, which is probably oranges and everything. Brush Markers has a similar one, and so does Spectrum Noir, while Spectrum Noir's coloring system is a little more complicated. But these guys just have numbers and they're not in any particularly particular order. Let's see if I can find some that are near each other. There's 11 and 14. These guys are kind of close in color. And so is 15, which is germanium right here. And then yellow seem to be 30s. So it's kind of like if you put them in order, you might get somewhat of a rainbow. Um, and they might blend nicely with their neighbors, but one last thing that you need to make sure or be aware of is colors don't match caps. So this color French Vermilion is probably not going to be this nice orange. And that's true for any marker you buy. I think Copics might be some of the best at it. Um, I heard don't judge on the Ohuhuas I have, because they have a newer version. Um, Drawing with Waffles actually did a video on the new ones recently. Um, and she thinks that the colors on the caps match very well. So, just don't judge them on mine. Um, but the plastic caps are easier to get that kind of color that you want rather than the stickers which stickers, depending on the printer you're using, doesn't always get you the most accurate color. And then Spectrum Noirs, as much of a, as I like them, just because they're always cheap and they're always on clearance at my local AC Moore, these are 100% inaccurate. They're, they don't match at all. So yeah, um... As you can see, there is a lot to talk about with these guys, and if you want me to go into depth with any single one of these brands, I would love to. 
uh, there's hours of content in these guys. Pretty much, I just want to demonstrate what you guys can do with these guys. And if you're interested in them, you can maybe go try out a pack. I would recommend going with a cheaper brand. The cheaper brands that I have are your Spectrum Noirs and your Ohuhus. Um, the Ohuhus, you can't buy any singular markers. They are all in at either a 24, 40, or uh, it's 24, 60, and then 80 or something. 20, 40, 60, 80? I don't remember. Um, I got the smallest pack you could. Um, and then Spectrum Nars actually are one of the fewer fillable markers in the cheaper levels. And that is another thing you want to keep on your mind. Keep on your mind when you're buying markers. So Ohuhus aren't refillable, but Copics are, which is one of the big draws with Copics. Also the barrel shape, which is nice because it does not roll around as other brands like Pro Markers do, even though they do have this little plastic tip to stop it, theoretically. Um, Ohuhus have a similar barrel. Spectrum Noirs have this octagonal one. But yeah. So, these guys are not refillable. These guys are. And then... You also need to pay attention to what has a brush tip and what does not. So cheaper brands typically have your your bullet nip here. So Spectrum Noir, as I already showed, I can get this off with one hand. They have pretty hard to get off caps sometimes. And they often do have marked which side is which. <laughs> with a clear marker of Normally, except for pro markers, where the shape is just different, these guys have little plastic to mark which side is normally the bullet or the brush nip. So, as you can see, he's got a bullet. Um, and pretty much any other cheaper brands that you're going to be buying are going to have your bullet nib instead of the brush nib, because Brush nib, I think, is probably more of a fancy feature that you can have. That guy looks disgusting. I have not used him in forever. He looks like he's just juicing, so I'm going to put him away. Um, apologies. One second. Or maybe it's crystallized. I don't even know. I'll try and figure that out later. <laughs> I don't really use the blacks much, but I do have quite a large collection of blacks. Just don't go out and buy your own black markers. You're gonna get plenty if you buy any packs of anything. Um, but yeah, in one of the more useless markers I think that you probably should not go out and buy thinking it's going to help is your blender. Every set has one, but they don't help you blend your markers. Don't use them. They just, it's just like pouring rubbing alcohol in your paper, it's just going to push the color away. It's not going to help you blend. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to get down to work. I've been babbling long enough. Okay, so see you on the flip, guys.
and we're back. So sorry I kind of finished this without you guys. Um, my camera filled up on space and I was just going. I needed to get this done and I was going good. So I kept it, I kept at it. So this is the final piece. As you can see, um, you can definitely see um, all the blending of the Copics and other alcohol markers and everything. Sorry, they're not over here anymore. I put them away just because they take up a lot of space. Um, but yeah, if you were watching, you probably noticed a lot of differences in the markers. Um, one of them being a nib size. If you do invest in Ohuhu's. I don't know if it's different now, but they have quite large bullet nibs while bullet nibs on pro markers are quite fine and they come to a point and that makes it easier to get into small spaces. Easier than it is with a brush marker since the nib is more flexible and it moves on you. So that's something to keep in mind. Of course, there's a huge debate on whether or not brush markers are better than um, just bullet nibs. From what I've seen, a lot of people do not favor in favor of bullet nibs or even chisel nibs. It's always brush nibs or or bust. Um, but uh, this might be con controversial, but I actually do enjoy using bullet nibs. And I kind of did realize this after accidentally buying a pro marker instead of a brush marker. But I used it and it was just a very nice marker to use. It helped me be more exact with where I was putting my marks and where I was putting the color. And I really enjoyed it. Um, I don't find it too hard to blend out, especially if you're using the chisel tip. You can blend pretty smoothly with that um, as long as you like lift up. It, there's not much of a difference between using that and using a brush tip. Um, oh, an update on my black. As you can see, it has infected my fingers, but <laughs> um, ink had just hardened on it. If, if that ever happens to you with your alcohol markers, just scribble like I did and it'll come off and it'll be working just fine again. If anything else happens to your alcohol markers, you may have a different problem. I know with those hashtag drawing markers that were in Hobby Lobby a little while ago, they could get growths on them. Um, I haven't any had any problems with my markers though. The only problems I've had is buying dead ones or having them die on me really. And that was the first time that's happened. So. Um, of course, they are markers, so they do dry up. They aren't an endless supply. Like everything, they run out at points. Um, if you have refillables, you don't have to toss the marker. You should keep the barrel and just order a refill ink of whatever marker you need a refill of. Um, but if you have like brush markers or pro markers, when they're dead, you just toss them. There's nothing you can really do. Um, you could probably pull off the nibs and fill it with another brand's ink, but it's not going to match perfectly to what you had, so I'd say best is just to cut your losses, throw it, and buy a new one. Um, sometimes it is cheaper to have refillable markers in the long run, but then again, if you have markers that are cheap enough and the refillable ones are too expensive, you gotta pick and fight your battles, you know. Um, don't buy any markers if you don't know if you like them, you don't know if they're right for you, um, you don't have the money, don't don't put yourself in debt to get them. Um, I have quite a lot, but um, I've just bought them over time. This wasn't an all-at-once purchase, and a lot of the markers that I got from my art halls were on clearance, so they were a lot cheaper than they normally are. Um, so just don't put yourself in debt if you're going to get these. Um, they can 
A lot of people don't use them to do portraits like I did, but they can be used to do portraits. I added, unlike a lot of, a lot of my other art supply Sundays, I added other mediums like um, gel pen, pencil, and white marker, white paint marker around the edges. So yeah, just keep in mind, you don't have to buy it if you don't have the money to. You don't have to buy them. Um, you can get just as good results with cheaper markers as you can with the more expensive ones. And just just be smart about it, okay guys? So yeah. Well, on that note, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned some, a bit, anything. <laughs> um, and as always, leave a little like if you like my video. Comment if you got anything to say. And subscribe if you want to see more. As always, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.